In the very first book in the Bible, the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve are, have eaten forbidden fruit and they're cast out of the Garden of Eden because of their sin. And ever since then, I believe, when tragedy strikes, people want to know if God is punishing them because they're involved in some sort of sin. And when the tragedy is great, many believe the sin has been greater. In our gospel reading today, people are asking Jesus about two tragic events that happened in their day in Galilee. A wicked Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, had commanded soldiers to slaughter Jews who were making sacrifices in the temple. And he ordered the soldiers to take the blood of those they had shed and killed and mix it with the animal sacrifices that had been placed on the altar. Not only did Pilate command murder, but even worse, he commanded the sacrilege of sacrileges. He mingled the human blood with sacrifices presented to God. The second tragic event the people asked Jesus about was the collapse of the tower in Siloam, in Jerusalem, and killed 18 people. Really, two horrible events, one caused by a wicked governor and the other by a natural disaster. And the people wanted to know what, they had, what had happened. Were the people involved being punished for their sin? Is that what happened? And if so, their sin must have been great. The murder of the Galileans in Luke's gospel surely reminds us, must remind us, I believe today, of the thousands of people, even sick children and women who are about to give birth to children, innocent people who are being murdered this very moment in the Ukraine. And as to the natural disaster, last win winter right here in Texas, a deep freeze gripped our state and the electric grid malfunctioned and 242 people died, including a one-year-old child and a 102-year-old woman who died, both of them died from hypothermia. In other words, they froze to death. Like citizens of the first century, we want an explanation of why these things happened. Why would the largest nation in the world want to invade a small country? Do they need the land? Surely not. And why did our electric grid malfunction in the very midst of a wealthy nation, in the midst of a freeze? We have questions and we want answers. The people in Jesus' day were no different. So they asked Jesus for an explanation. And Jesus knew what they wanted to know. They wanted to know if the people who died were worse sinners than anyone else. And Jesus understood this, so he asked them, do you think the Galileans who died were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? And the 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell, were they worse sinners than those who dwell in Jerusalem? There must have been stunned silence because Jesus answered the question himself twice. He said, I tell you no, I tell you no, they were not worse sinners. And if you don't repent of your sin, you will suffer a similar fate. And why is that? Why did Jesus say their sins were no worse than anyone else's? And that is because we are all sinners. We're all in need of repentance, not just those upon whom tragedy falls. Jesus warned people. He wanted them to know that God isn't searching for people to kill. That's not what God is about. Just the opposite. God is looking for sinners who, to forgive them. God wants to restore their lives. Several years ago, I read about a 
tornado, you may have heard about this, I think it was in Oklahoma, a tornado that skipped right over a bar room and destroyed a church. Were the parishioners in that church worse sinners than the bar owner? I don't think so. Probably not. Okay, he really, they weren't. They weren't, absolutely were not. The members of the church were not worse sinners than the owner of the bar room. And a similar question would be to ask, are those who are dying in the Ukraine worse sinners than people in the surrounding nations? No, they are not worse sinners. And yet, that is what many people believed in the first century, that God punishes sinners by killing them, by letting them live in poverty, by causing them to acquire a horrible disease such as leprosy. So they isolated them from the rest of the people. And today, many people still think like that, that God punishes sin when tragedy strikes. I say that because for the last 10 years, I have facilitated a bereavement group every Tuesday. And I have witnessed men and women devastated by the loss of their loved one. And often they want to know if God is punishing them because of their sin. One person said this. He said that he believed God took his spouse away from him to punish him because he had never entered the door of a church. But is that the God we serve? I believe not. God, I believe, is a God of love. God did not kill the people of Galilee. The Roman governor is the one, Pontius Pilate, he's the one who ordered their death. And God did not send an earthquake to destroy the Tower of Siloam. Do bad things happen to good people? Oh, yes. Do good things happen to bad people? Yes, they do. But whether good or bad, God is there for us, whatever our situation may be. And in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we learn that God has the final word, the ultimate word. Evil does not win. Love wins, and God is love. On Wednesday evenings during this season of Lent, we've been gathering in the parish hall for a bowl of soup and to study a book by Adam Hamilton entitled Half Truths. The subtitle is God Helps Those Who Help Themselves and Other Things the Bible Does Not Say. Yet we have learned that these half truths are expressed all the time in our life. We hear people saying them as if they're words from scripture. And the first chapter in the book was entitled, Everything Happens for a Reason. Sounds pretty reasonable, doesn't it? Especially if you believe nothing happens unless God allows it to happen. And that is the theology of some. And if that is true, then God must be the reason for every tragedy we experience in life. Even when someone refuses to be vaccinated and they die during the pandemic. People will say that God could have prevented his or her death. But that would remove human responsibility, wouldn't it? There would be no need for repentance or amendment of life. Just the opposite. Some think it is God, in fact, who should repent for allowing tragedy to enter their life. They say it in one way or another. And there has to be a reason, they believe, for everything that happens. So people look to God for the answer. Sounds religious to do that. But it means some put God on the judgment seat and will say, I will never worship a God who would let that happen. Perhaps you have heard that said. I have definitely heard it said. Today's gospel lesson invites us to consider some very profound questions. And the season of Lent is meant for us to spend time in prayer and meditation, in Bible study, 
and a time to search our hearts to see if there's anything that stands between us and God. The season of Lent is also a time to prepare our hearts for the biggest question of all, which is, why did God allow his only begotten son, Jesus, to suffer the painful death of crucifixion on a cross? How could God let that happen? The fact is, the God who let that happen is a God of love and a God who, in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, has given great redemption and great expression of love and mercy to all who experience it and who know it. I believe that that is the kind of God that we want to know because that is a God who loves us unconditionally and the depth of our sin is never measured. Or even if our sin happens to be great in our minds, The God of love is greater than our greatest sin. And that is a God we can love. Amen.